But first, knowing our home is protected by a smoke alarm lets us sleep a little easier at night. But unless the worst happens, how can we be sure that the thing actually works? Mother, daughter, partner, niece, nephew, all gone. Five members of his family lost, his life destroyed. All Colin Zonneveld has left is his 11-year-old son, Shane. I feel pretty lost. Pretty lost and, yeah, Shane feels pretty lonely with, with his family gone. And, mm. What makes it harder is the fact that Colin thought his home and family were protected by what's called an ionisation smoke alarm. We thought we were doing the right thing. Thought we had everything here, yeah, right, and obviously didn't. What about our families? Our kids are burning up and they've got these ionisation alarms. The damn things are so ineffective, it's unbelievable. Adrian Butler's sounding the alarm. The former firefighter and smoke detector salesman says ionisation alarms are simply not safe enough. Well, the fact is if you've got an ionisation alarm in your house and you have a fire tonight, the chances are you're not going to make it. There are two types of smoke alarms. Photoelectrics detect slow, smouldering fires, the kind that start when a cigarette falls onto a bed or couch. Ionisation alarms pick up fast, flaming fires. They're characterised by this radioactive warning symbol on the back. They're in almost every Australian home, more popular because they're cheaper. What did the public need to know? What they need to know is that the type of alarm that's in their home at the moment is an insidious device. It will go off and just about every time they burn the toast, the, the husband has a whippersnipper outside, just about every time actual real world fires. The ionisation alarm is a piece of junk. It doesn't work and it's a death trap because... Richard Patton is a fire engineer and consultant in the US. He's joined Adrian in a crusade against fire deaths. I would like to see the government uh, may force a recall of all ionization detectors and force the manufacturers to reimburse the people. Well, I think that's alarmist, um, and, and, and from a commercial practicality and reality point of view, almost impossible to achieve, given that um, ionization smoke alarms do comply with the required Australian standard. Really David simple. Isaac is from Petronic Industries, paper. manufacturers of fire detection systems. He says ionisation alarms are better than having no alarm at all. So to throw ionisation out for nothing would be foolish. However, to, um, to replace ionisation with photoelectric would be in, in, um, quite prudent. But even manufacturers agree there are too many false alarms. Well, one of the problems with ionisation is um, what I call the cry wolf syndrome. You will set off the alarms by simply lighting the candles on a birthday cake or perhaps overheating a fry pan surface or a griller surface before there's any visible smoke. Now, residents have become intolerant of that after a while and I've seen people put brooms through smoke alarms and in the end, out of frustration, pull batteries out trying to silence the things. And, more importantly, he concedes ionisation alarms can have a blind spot in certain kinds of fires. If the fire develops a long smouldering phase that fills the house with smoke, it's unlikely the smoke alarm will work. If manufacturers are aware of this, why aren't they alerting the public? Some people could argue that it's the regulatory responsibility. Others would argue that it's, um, it's a goodwill measure on behalf of the industry. At the end of the day, it's a funding issue. Public education is very important. My principal concern is that if uh, uh, alarmists suggest that ionisations ought to be outlawed, then people are going to lose faith in them. Unless they replace those with another type of alarm, they won't be protected. Damien Killerley is Director of Community $60. Fire Safety at the Tasmanian Fire Service. Ionisation alarms don't kill people, it's fires that kill people. And in fact, uh, there is many, many cases across the world of ionisation alarms saving people's lives. But what do Australians do? I mean, which one do you get? Well, ideally, Australians should consider putting uh, both types of alarms in their homes. Uh, avoid putting ionisation alarms in kitchen areas or near bathrooms to avoid false alarms. And it's fantastic that the fire brigades are now saying we should have photoelectric alarms. Wonderful. But that's not the full story. It's only part of the story. The public need the education. And Adrian Butler is doing his bit with a documentary called Stop the Children Burning. Join us and help. Stop the Children Burning. 
It's not by chance that the Crusade chose this remote northwest tip of Tasmania to launch their documentary. This was the site of a tragic house fire that killed four children. But the fire brigade says there was no physical evidence at this stage of any smoke detectors in the property. They won't guarantee uh, your survival in a fire, but they significantly increase your chances of survival. Lise Mooney with that disturbing report. The experts seem to agree that if you do have one of those ionisation alarms in your home, then please don't take it down or dismantle it yet. Wait until you have installed a new system. Some protection against fire is obviously better than none at all. If you'd like more details on that story, then please go to our website, 9msn.com.au. There it is there.